The sense of navigation in the animal kingdom is a mystery in neuroscience. How does the brain create a map of its surroundings? How do we maintain our sense of direction when we encounter an obstacle? In the 1980s, scientists had discovered a group of cells called head direction cells that help us know our angular orientation. Similar to compass needles, these cells indicate the angle in which the head is pointed. But what happens when we are thrown off course by an unseen force and we are trying to navigate in a direction that is different from the way that our head is pointing? In this episode, we talk about the discovery of special neurons in our brains that carry out complex vector math to keep track of the direction in which the body is moving, regardless of which way the body is pointing. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Consider a fly being shunted backward by a strong wind in defiance of their forward beating wings. A fish swimming upriver or traps scuttling sideways. Even humans moving left while looking to the right present similar challenges. A new study published in the Nature Journal reports that the fly brain has a set of neurons that signal the direction in which the body is travelling regardless of the direction in which the head is pointing. The findings by researchers from Rockefeller University in the US also describes in detail how the fly's brain calculates the signal from more basic sensory inputs. Even when we close our eyes, we can usually retain a good idea of where we are in the room and which way we are facing. That's because our brain constructs an internal understanding of where we are in space. The head direction cells play a key role in letting us know our angular orientation and flies too have cells with similar functions. The cell's activity indicates the angle in which the head is pointing. These cells would be sufficient when we were walking or flies are flying in the same direction that the head is facing. The head direction cells update the internal sense of where one is going. But if we walk north while facing east, or if a fly attempts to fly forward while the wind pushes it backward, the head direction cells point in the wrong direction. Yet somehow, the system still works. Flies are relatively unperturbed by the indignities of wind currents and humans don't get lost when we look around to take in the scenery during a walk. So researchers wondered how flies know where they are going even when their head direction cells were seemingly relaying inaccurate on information. For the study, the team glued fruit flies to miniature harnesses that hold only the insects' heads in place, enabling them to record brain activity while leaving the flies free to flap their wings and steer their bodies through a virtual environment. The setup contained several visual cues including a bright light representing the sun and a field of dimmer dots that could be adjusted to make the fly feel like it was being blown backward or sideways. The team found that the head direction cells consistently indicated the fly's orientation to the sun, which here was simulated by the bright light independently of the perceived motion. In addition, the researchers identified a new set of cells that indicated which way the flies were travelling and not just the direction their head was pointing. For example, if the flies were oriented directly toward the sun in the east while being blown backward, these cells indicated that the flies were travelling west. This is the first set of cells known to indicate which way an animal is moving in a world-centered reference instead of a head-centered reference frame. The team also wondered how fly brains compute the animal's travel direction at the cellular level. But the team was able to demonstrate that fly brains engages in a sort of mathematic exercise. In physics, when we plot an object's trajectory, it is broken into components of motion plotted along the x and y axis. Similarly, in the fly brain, four classes of neurons that are sensitive to visual motion indicate the fly's travelling direction as components along four axes. Each neuronal class can be thought of as representing a mathematical vector. A vector is an object that has both magnitude and direction. So for example, when we talk about an object's velocity, it is an example of a vector because it describes how fast an object is moving and in which direction it is moving. 
the vector's angle points in the direction of its associated axis. The vector's length indicates how fast the fly is moving along that direction. So, a neural circuit in the fly brain rotates these four vectors so that they are aligned properly to the angle of the sun and then adds them up. The result is an output vector that points to the direction the fly is traveling, referenced to the sun. Vector math in this case is not just an analogy for the computation taking place. The team found evidence that the fly brain is literally performing vector maths. Neurons explicitly represent vectors as waves of activity with the position of the wave representing the vector's angle and the height of the wave representing its length. The researchers even tested this idea by precisely manipulating the length of the four input vectors and showing that the output vector changes just as it would if the flies were literally adding up vectors. What makes this study unique is that it provides extensive evidence to show how neuronal circuits implement sophisticated mathematical operations. The research clarifies how flies figure out which way they are going in the moment. But future studies will examine how these insects keep track of their travel direction over time to know where they have ultimately ended up. The core question is how does the brain integrate signals related to the animal's travel direction and speed over time to form memories. That can help further understand how working memory looks in the brain. The findings may also have implications for human disease. Since spatial confusion is often an early sign of Alzheimer's disease, many neuroscientists are interested in understanding how brains construct an internal sense of space. The fact that insects with their tiny brains have explicit knowledge of their travelling direction means we should also search for similar signals in mammal brains. Such a discovery might inform aspects of dysfunction underlying Alzheimer's disease as well as other neurological disorders that afflict spatial cognition. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.